Okay, so let's take a look at how we would get set up with database support within Slim, how we would use it within our roots, and then we'll move on to the next part to look at a user profile example and actually uh, defining in the URL who we want to see and then showing that on the page. So just kind of general stuff that we'd want to do. Now, the first thing is just to create a little users table. So I'm going to go ahead and do this very roughly. Uh, you might want to follow along. I'm just using MySQL, but it doesn't matter uh, which database server you're using or which software you're using. It's all going to work in the same way. So maybe we would have a username. Maybe this is what we want to see in the URL when we're trying to show a user's profile. And let's say we also had a email address in here as well. So this would be a varchar. And maybe we had a full name for this user as well. So I'm just going to do this really roughly. And we're going to go ahead and insert a couple of records here. So let's say that we had Alex here. So I'll go ahead and enter my email address in here and my full name. And let's go and just duplicate this down and do just a couple more. So let's say Billy, switch this over and do a similar thing here as well. And we'll just do one more like so. Switch that over. And we are done. Of course, you can enter as much as you want in here or use whatever data you're kind of working with. OK, so to go ahead and set up database support within Slim, the key is to use our container. So what we want to do is somewhere where we're bootstrapping our application. Now, at the moment, we're doing this all on one page, but we are going to look at a better structure to a project in the next section. So in this case, I would say something like container db or however I wanted to access this within my roots and I would just do a normal container binding like so. Now in this case we would maybe use PDO so we would return a new PDO instance. If you've not worked with PDO uh, this just allows you to define any kind of uh, supported uh, driver in here for any database system and in my case I'm using MySQL. So now I would uh, define out my host just in here. In this case, it's going to be localhost and the database name as well. Now, in this case, I've called it slim. And then is the second and third argument would be the username and the password. So we now technically have database support inside of our project. So now, as we know, when we define some kind of route, we can go ahead and access this. So let's just play around with this. And then in the next part, we'll pull this together into a kind of usable example. And in this case, maybe I wanted to grab a list of all users. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So we would obviously say this DB query, and we would go ahead and just define in our query here. So maybe we wanted to select all columns from the users table. And then maybe immediately after this, we want to fetch all of these. And then we can choose if we want to fetch them as an object, as a, an associative array. And in my case, it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and use an object, because if we were to pass this down to Twig, Twig handles objects really well. So now if we go ahead and do a var dump on users, we should have uh, an array of three objects. And they, of course, will be the three users we have in our database. So let's go over to the home page, give that a refresh, and you can see that we get exactly what we expected. And just a reminder with what I said earlier, the reason we are binding this onto our container is this will only be technically run once within our application lifecycle. What we wouldn't want to do is uh, keep newing this up every single time. So adding it onto our container makes it super convenient to do things like this. And we know that it's there for us wherever we need it in any of the routes we need it. We don't really need to do anything else. We just say this DB, which kind of makes sense. We create a query. We go ahead and fetch all of the results and we go ahead and do something with them. So now that we've done that, let's move on to the next part where we're going to look at uh, using what we've learned about our URL, going ahead and grabbing a user, sending that data down to a view and outputting in. Hopefully that should pull everything nicely together and give you a good idea about how you would pull this together in your own applications.